Welcome to Under the Helmet, presented by Sprint. Chief General Manager Scott Pioli is our guest today. Scott, seven weeks into the season, seven of 17. What's the overall state of the Chiefs right now? Uh, I think we're, we're an improving team. You know, I think that that's obvious. Through the first quarter of the season, we're three and one. Now heading into the second quarter of the season, start off 0-1-1. I think what we are is what's evident in everyone, is a football team that's better than we were last year. We're smarter, we're tougher, we're more competitive. We're a better team, but we have a long, long way to go, Josh. I think everyone's seen the evolution that this team's made. And, and to you, did it start with the preseason that this team had and just continue in through training camp and then into where we are right now? Yeah, as everyone knows, you know, we added a lot of coaches this year. I think it was a total of nine new coaches, a lot of players. Everyone uh, spends a lot of time talking about the draft choices who we'll figure out in time whether or not they're good players or not. But we've had the addition of a lot of other new players, Casey Wiggeman, Ryan Lilja, Thomas Jones, players who had to get integrated into the system along with the coaches. This evolution began not only, it began with free agency and with the draft, but also with the coaches coming in. So there's been a lot of things in motion here. I think a lot of common questions from Chiefs fans is, during a season, what's a week like for Scott Peel? Are you, are you hunkered down in the office looking at, at free agents and guys out there? Are you at college campuses? Well, what is a typical week like for you? It's a combination of those things. There's a lot, you know, Mondays and Tuesdays after the game, I'm generally in the office. Depending on the situation in the game and how the game went on Sunday, and depending on the number of injuries we may have had or didn't have, that'll dictate how much time I can spend out of the office. Because this is a great time of year. When you hit October, it's a great time. It's when conference schedules begin. It's a great time to get out to college campuses, see players as the season has started. It's in the middle of the season for them. So the, the last couple of weeks I've been out on the road, got to hit a couple of uh, Midwest schools here in the, in the last week and also in a league meeting. So it's a little bit of everything. I'm in the office and then last Tuesday I was in Chicago for a day and then Wednesday and Thursday I was in two different college campuses back here on Friday to leave with the team on, uh, to go to Houston on Saturday. So there's a lot going on this time of year. Well, other guys that are on the road right now, probably full-time, are what I like to yeah. think of the offensive linemen of the personnel department, the, right. the scouts, kind of the unsung yeah. heroes. Talk about their contributions to what you guys do big picture. It starts with them because right now they're out not only working on the 2011 draft, but they're working on the 2012 draft. They're out gathering information, doing evaluations. You know, Phil Emery, who's our college director, and his scouting staff, um, they, they do an unbelievable job. And people talk about this draft class that we just had. And again, we don't know where that's gonna end up yet. It always takes a couple years to evaluate a draft, whether it's bad or good. This group of guys, they lay the foundation. They start the whole process with gathering the information, letting the decision makers know where we should go. There's the area scouts are all out at different schools right now. And they let Phil and Joel Collier and myself have an idea of which schools we have to do, spend a little bit more time and get a focus on. These guys, the amount of time that they spend away from their families and the amount of time they spend working and driving and eating bad food and all the things that they have to do, um, they, they, it's, a, it's an amazing process. And these, unfortunately, these people never get brought to light. But without the work that they've done, again, we don't know how this draft is actually gonna look three years from now. If it works out, primary credit needs to go to those guys who've been out doing all the work. As we watch games throughout the month of October, we've seen pink cleats, pink towels, pink footballs, pink hats. So the NFL, they've taken an ownership to this Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And from what I understand, it's also a touching area for you as well. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, my mother's a survivor. It takes a couple of years for a person to be clean to actually be a survivor. My mother is considered a survivor now. And uh, it's affected other members of my family and currently one member of my family. It's an important initiative because it's something, we have an ability in this league to have a platform to make people aware of things. But this is a great opportunity for the league to reach out to people and do some good in an area where there needs to be a much greater awareness. It's a really important initiative and in, in the importance of people getting screened before it's too late. And, you know, my mother fortunately was able to be screened early enough where she was able to find out what she needed to get done and then she went through, you know, a very, very tough time. Um, but now thankfully she's recovering. 65 toss power trap. That might pop wide open, Rats. 